I've mentioned it a bunch of times on this platform, on pretty much every other platform. I was not alive the last time the Montreal Canadiens won a Stanley Cup. Uh, Jess is the youngest panelist besides me out of everyone. Uh, not to put age into this here. I'm, I'm sure you were pretty young when the Canadians won the Stanley Cup as well. Uh, and I've already made enough jokes about Stu and Rick's age. Anyway, uh, what do you think this run has meant to the city of Montreal, in particular, their younger fans who haven't seen anything like this? Well, firstly, as you mentioned, it gives the young fans uh, a way to brag about how young they are, that they weren't alive in 1993 when this happened before. I was five, by the way. Uh, but... <laughs> But I, you know what, it, 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 I think it's great for this younger generation of Montreal Canadiens fans to be able to experience this. Now, in 2014 and in 2010, when they did make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, as soon as they got there, you knew it was done, that they weren't going to be able to keep up uh, in that round and make it onto the Stanley Cup final. But they have been able to exceed expectations. There's been a lot of comparisons to the 93 year because that team was not supposed to go on and make it to the Cup final and win the Cup final. So there was a lot of parallels there. But I, I think especially after the year and a half everyone has been going through with COVID, it has been so nice to have something that unites the city and gives joy to people. And even if you weren't a Habs fan back in January when the season started, people are jumping on that bandwagon wagon and really enjoying it. And I think uh, that's really good for them to, to see what it's like to have a little taste of, uh, of having a team that's in the Stanley Cup final and potentially having the capability to win it. Yeah, I spoke with Guy Carbonell a few days ago for a column I wrote on HockeyInsideOut.com, the last Canadian's captain to hoist the Stanley Cup. And I said, you know, how do you feel when you look back and see pictures of that? And he said, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. <clears throat> Excuse me, Shea Weber was seven years old the last time the Canadians won the Stanley Cup. So think really? about that. So it's great, you know, walking out of the center for these games, seeing all the fans gathered outside. They're young. It's, it's a young, and they all have Canadian sweaters. I mean, Jeff Molson isn't making money or as much money as he would have liked off of tickets at the Bell Center, but he must be making a lot of money on uh, sweater sales because, like, everybody, it seems, walking around downtown has a Canadian sweater on, and a lot of them are new ones. A lot of them are Suzuki and Caulfields and Kotkaniemi, so these are recent purchases. Um, I saw one guy walking around at number 24 with Lord Stanley as the name, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, it's nice to see the enthusiasm of the young fans. It's something they've never experienced before. Uh, never mind the Canadians winning the Stanley Cup. They had never seen them even get to the Stanley Cup final. And, uh, you know, I did a story this week also on some fans who got a chance to get tickets and uh, 900 bucks a pop at face value. And they're saying it was worth it just to experience, to actually be in the building for a Stanley Cup final game. Something that uh, one of them said, uh, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, maybe. Hoping it's not a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but, but it might be. Yeah, I think it's great just to see the passion of the young fans and, and you know, young fans who weren't even hockey fans before. My daughter doesn't like sports at all. She's 22 years old, and she's she's watching the games and following the games, and really excited about it. So I think it's 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 captured the attention of the entire city, even people who aren't necessarily Canadians fans or even sports fans. So it's really been a lot of fun to watch. And the Montreal Canadian fans, I'm telling you, they are probably some of the best in the uh, pro sports and. You know, to, uh, to to see what they're doing, rallying behind this post-pandemic stuff. Uh, you know, everybody jumping on board to uh, to cheer their team on. It's it's really really nice to see. And I, you know, I, I talked to my wife uh, last night. I said, looking in the crowd, I'm really surprised at the youth of the, the number of fans that have really you know got into it. And again, it's. Uh, it's an opportunity for them to gather as a group, which they haven't been able to do for so long. They get together with their friends. They have something to cheer about, and they're all on board to, uh, you know, uh, cheering and showing some positive stuff for the city and everything that goes with it. And you, you know, you got to look at the, the bars, restaurants, every aspect of, uh, you know, what goes on with the Montreal Canadian Games is uh, nothing but. Uh, good stuff and i'm really happy for you know everybody that uh, is involved in it and is you know having an opportunity to partake in probably the best time of year in the stanley cup finals yeah those COVID, really COVID and lockdowns, the COVID curfews and lockdowns were so hard on everybody but i was yeah. thinking of myself, i can't imagine if i was like 20 going through that like you know in my 20s you're supposed to be downtown you're supposed to be partying you're supposed to be having a good time 
And and so I was thinking of, you know, with somebody who has two kids who are in their 20s, like, it was, it's hard for that young generation to be locked in their house for so long. It's nice to see them out and downtown, and the weather is nice, and the terraces are open, and they're having fun, and I think the city really needed this. And the COVID cases are still low, uh, relatively speaking. And you're absolutely right, especially with those kids. I can think of my, my younger sister who – this was supposed to be her first year of university going to campus and stuff like that. Not that she's like a half or anything, but I imagine there are a bunch of people who are in that exact same situation who, you know, they didn't get to go through any of the campus stuff at university. And now they're having all the fun enjoying this Montreal Canadiens run out and about. Another thing uh, that I've, that uh, I've enjoyed, I'll, I'll kind of plug this here. Uh, during game four, uh, one of my former colleagues at ha at uh, Habs Eyes on the Prize was doing a TV hit with City TV, and they were getting they were asking him uh, who he thought was going to win, uh, was going to score the overtime winning goal for the Canadians in that game four, and he said Josh Anderson would score uh, twice in that game, and that he would score the OT winner. And within like five seconds of him saying that, Josh Anderson scores. He goes crazy. He pretty much runs away from the interview and just goes nuts. And the camera just shows everyone downtown just having a ball. It has been amazing to see from a distance because I'm not in the crowds with everybody. I'm either at home or at the rink. Uh, but it has been really fun to see Montreal Canadiens fans just enjoy themselves throughout this postseason. And regardless of how it ends, I mean, come on. I think there are memories that will be able to last a lifetime with all of those fans. And I think with some of us, too, with the way that we've been able to speak about it on uh, Hockey Inside Out, which... Uh, uh, I'll mention, uh, good on you, Stu, for plugging your column with Geek Carpenter. You can go on to HockeyInsideOut.com to read that. Uh, let us know in the comments section what this run has meant to you. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more bonus videos, more episodes, and all that good stuff.